with Burgess here, uh, Robert A. Cliff. So you probably get, um, have to explain what the Druid Film Festival is a lot, so I'm not sure if it's too automatic, but if you want to say anything about the film festival you work on, and maybe in a way that's you don't always get to say what yeah. it's about or what it does? Uh, well, I started the Druid Underground Film Festival when I was uh, in a DIY space in Los Angeles called Il Corral. And um, I got tasked with, uh, we were doing about three to five shows a week. And um, they gave me the opportunity to be booking shows and I had just graduated from film school at CalArts, so like, uh, I was surrounded by really talented people. And a lot of filmmakers, what they do is, they'll do uh, they'll do the hardest work, which is actually making the films, and they'll make good films, but then actually um, distributing and organizing and. Uh, making sure that people see the film. Uh, They're not always so good at doing, getting it out there to people. It's, uh, and it, and that's part of, you know, it's sort of cliche, but it's sort of part of, you know, a lot of people have it divided. You're either an organized brain and you're good at math, <laughs> or you're like me and you're like more on the artistic side. Um, so, which is kind of ironic uh, because I got into, I do make films myself, but I really got into just the distribution. We distribute about 30 films right now um, by people, but then I also, obviously, the exhibition side is what uh, the the film festival part of it is. Um, but uh, the Druid Underground Film Festival uh, exhibits um, subversive, sh mostly short films, um, and in Los Angeles. Uh, I'm saying um a lot. <laughs> um, mm. uh, well, I, 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 there's so much to talk about, but uh, maybe to stay with the Los Angeles part of this, because Druid mm -hmm. Film Festival is happening for a long time. This is its ninth tour, I believe. Mm -hmm. But in the in the beginning years, I'm thinking that you were part of a larger performance art community that was beyond just film, and it was people who transgressed the, the boundaries of certain medias. Uh, I know you have ties to the music community as well. And you played in bands, if I understand. Um, yeah. And you, but you, probably you, you were probably exposed to a whole spectrum of expressions that kind of were, were part of the origins of the Druid Film Festival and yeah. in the communities that you're promoting almost. I imagine. A friend of mine named Sean Carnage got me, kind of, grandfathered me into the space that I was uh, eventually lived at and was um, booking shows at, and. Um, the first ever kind of pre-Druid show that I worked on was a screening of El Topo back when El Topo wasn't released on DVD. You could only find it on like these VHS copies that had like Asian subtitles and like all the genitals were kind of fogged out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and we screened that and um, put on a performance at the same time. So we made these like giant paintings and uh, there were these trash cans. We were trying to make people do centuries, uh, which is like a timed like drinking game that people were doing. So people were getting really uh, fucked up. And uh, this one guy in particular was doing a century, but then also drinking whiskey and probably some other things and ended up um, in the front row he started pissing into a trash can and then he took the trash can and emptied it on the front row which was a good uh, precursor to the rest of my career well and also our conversation <laughs> when I first met you you were talking about Gigi Allen so I can see like, yeah <laughs> you know wow. so I, I you know and I and I happened to, to be one of the people in the front row uh, and I uh, I, um, you know, I don't mind, I don't mind You bored for it's, art's sake. You like I took it, I took a hit for the <laughs> team. Um, but it's not to say that that's, um, totally where 
I mean, maybe that is, you know, maybe that does sum up. Uh, I'm trying to, I'm definitely trying to confront people for sure. I like tricking people. I like, um, like, for example, whenever I would do metal shows, I would do projections, and a lot of the projections were um, from underground cinema history and, like, real weird, dark shit that people don't know about probably in the metal scene they're not being so you were asking me about the ninth annual yeah how, this is a tr the ninth tour and it's mm -hmm. the the west coast portion of it mm -hmm. so we did los angeles um san francisco we're gonna go up to humboldt next then we're gonna go back and do the east coast and all the way down to through the south a little bit but not as extensively as last year last year we did 16 shows in 13 states uh this year we're doing uh, slightly less than that but um it's a good show this year um the first half is a vhs mixtape uh, which i've been doing like the past three years um, we did uh, our vhs assault mix then uh, we had this uh, mixtape collective out of boston called the whore church and they showed uh, this really crazy thing. They're kind of interesting because they live together in a Victorian house on the outside of Boston, and it's all decrepit, kind of like Fight Club. That's like the way I like to think about it, but not as nice as the Fight Club house. <laughs> but uh, it's like really uh, this decrepit house, and they just have a whole room full of VHS, and they spend their weekends just, you know, getting high and editing. And it's really, it's really amazing it's because kind of, their crea creative output is really unusual. Yeah, like, because they literally they live all together, and then they film each other in these like weird masks, and then they show, you know, they cut together scenes from horror movies and porno and instructional videos, but they really do it seamlessly. So that it's like as lowbrow and like funny as that part of it is, the editing is like is actually really accomplished and yeah. like. Pretty much, you couldn't get any more like tech than the way that these guys do it. Are just like on spec. Um, but the stuff that we this year we have a lot of animations. Uh, there's some great stuff coming out of Brooklyn. This guy named Steve Gerard. Uh, he is one of these sort of like next level filmmakers, and uh, in particular, the first film that we're gonna show. Uh, he cuts his own head off and then he fucks his own head. Oh. With, but it's necessarily a studious uh, with their 80s and 90s like art. Well, every film. scene has its conservative elements to it. Yeah. Whether it's punk rock, the art community. But this is, to them, is like, it's, it's, I was picking things that were more kind of like on the, on the level of like horror movie stuff. But like even weirder because it's you know people with Halloween masks, you know, on sticks like, <laughs> and stuff, you know, stuff that like really is actually uh, super freaky, and they're like sitting there going like whoa, like not realizing that these were videos that I had pirated from my time at CalArts, and I was showing them. Um, Films that basically you can only rent to institutions for like three hundred dollars a year, kind of shit, which is bullshit. What's so the gatekeepers just, of culture? You gotta get yeah. Them. Rolling. All right. Um, well, one of the secret parts of the Druid Underground Film Festival that I don't talk about um, is that there's a secret intention. Um, a lot of times people when they're making films are so concerned with the exterior and finding you know the thing that's gonna make the audience happy and they so often don't concentrate on the interior and, and what's really happening in their own souls and the films that I try to get in contact with and I am attracted to are the films that fil where filmmakers have exposed something from within themselves. I mean personally as an artist I find that I never run out of 
things to write about because write about or make films about because usually I'll ask myself well what is it that I don't want to make a film about like what is it that I'm afraid of and that's usually the the, the thing that I go ah all right well fuck I got, now I know what I have to and it's painful well so much of that Spain Rodriguez thing we saw a Spain Rodriguez uh, mural yesterday and he ex went for the nerve, like the sex and violence that was suppressed, he would mm -hmm. show in his artwork. Exactly. So I'm trying to find those things where people get away from the exterior um, as much as uh, in the terms of digging inside and pulling out this, the darkness that's within them and exposing it. And ultimately when you expo and expose it that way, you're exercising some kind of uh, internal bullshit uh, that you need to get get out of yourself. And um, by making it, by bringing it to the light and exposing it, um, people can see, people can see that in the film. And I can certainly uh, see it. And if someone has basically exercised a demon through their work um, and you can see it, then my hope is, and my fantasy is, is that more people will then be turned on to exercise their own demons through their own work. And this is the kind of secret underpinning of the Druid Underground Film Festival, is an exorcism of people's demons. And also, in turn, challenging and continuing to, you know, roll with this very powerful in my mind concept of challenging the system itself uh cinema being uh very much about the mundane and the surface and the shit that really doesn't matter because what really matters is uh is people's souls right on and um uh and that supports maybe other aspects where it's not just a film fest or a gathering for consumers, but it's it encourages people to um, uh, you encourage people to and the whole the vibe of the whole fest encourages people to make films or to make things afterwards. Totally, I mean that's what I say after every uh, screening is to not just sit on that energy. Like you can go and see an incredible film or play or whatever it is if you get inspired by just the way a crack has cracked along the sidewalk if you get inspired by that um, a lot of people will be inspired for a moment and then move on with their day and for whatever reason sometimes the momentum of of inspiration is fleeting and you need to pick it up uh, it's and people don't like they'll they'll watch something and then they'll go home and watch something else you know or they'll just continue to sort of consume consume unfortunately and it, and I think that in some cases you are if you get into that consumption you don't mind if I grab a soda while you're talking no no, no. I'll be back um, thinking about the audience is, is funny because I spend so much time alone alone driving alone going to copy worlds and making um, flyers and I think it's only you know f 10 to 15 percent of my experience is actually going and doing being in the room with all the in the dark room with all the people and um, being able to talk to people uh, face to face um, so it's kind of bizarre to think about um, you know the question of like interaction with people because uh, especially being on the road right now and like waking up at 630 in the morning well and also maybe film is such a um, uh, sometimes people go to it as a private experience it's maybe not as a social experience yeah I mean like, of course you're from the performance art community mm -hmm. where people would be social and you would also help people set up you worked mm -hmm. in industries of uh, art stuff too where you had to do setups and social um, yeah and I worked for, I worked for Hollywood for six years and I worked on Lexus commercials and 
Oh, shit. You know, Nike commercials, and you know, I was in the art department, and I was peeing, and I was, I was, um, as they say, I was making sure that the trains ran on time. Mm. So I was one of them. Hill Hitler. Yeah, I was one of those little. Uh, uh, I, although I would be a terrible Hitler for Halloween because I can't grow, I can't grow hair, right here. This is like weird. I also can't grow Side fucking sideburns. Oh, wow. I would be. Uh, my sideburns would be amazing. There should you be have a, some good a medical condition for that. We should put, have a name for that. Like, um, can't grow sideburns. We'll think about it later. It's but patchy. Yeah. It's patchy. Whatever these, uh, my my thoughts are patchy. Can on I jump, the subject. jump from Hollywood to the placebo, or sure. to, like, well, I mean, before the placebo, you're in high school. Your schools was there a film club or something that where people appreciated films that was like, or is it more just like a crew of friends that that kind of set you on the film trajectory? Well, when I was 13, I was lucky enough to get a freaking camera for my birthday, oh, which was crazy. Um, but I knew when I was five years old, I had like a weird epiphany that I was going to be making films, which I'm kind of reaching even farther back than the question. But uh, I was watching, I was watching... Boris Karloff in, in the film Frankenstein and I was so uh, scared that I actually had to look away at the room and disengage from the reality that was happening. Yeah, I love those kind of horror movies um, where I couldn't watch the screen. Yeah, <laughs> but what I realized when I was a kid is that there's two realities happening. Mm. But the reason why the reality was happening on the screen was because of a third reality. And I knew that I wanted to be part of that third reality, which was the act of actually making. Oh, wow. wow. Uh, and that was like, that's kind of um, where I'm coming from, where I'm still sort of behind the scenes encouraging people to, to make. You're inviting make, them make, into the third reality. Right. And, but, but importantly, making films, inviting people into the reality of making films that have an effect. I mean, this is why you know, horror so often sneaks into it, um, and it sneaks in from every direction. Uh, it's not just definable as a horror movie in a genre ten uh, tense, but uh, in the, the terms of having some kind of shock effect is so important uh, to really wake people up and also to strike um, hard and e efficiently in um, terms of a true exorcism like we were talking about before because it's not quiet always it can be but um, it's so important that people take that giant leap into not being afraid of making noise and not being afraid of doing something that could be uh, an embarrassment to them or you know exposing themselves in some way you know whether it's way deep underneath the surface or uh, like sometimes often animation that's abstract can be um, or it's a literal diary type of confession um, that's done in a creative uh, way. Um, well, the way I, I relate to what you're saying um, is I, I identify with what I think your experiences were at the placebo as a young teenager, mm -hmm. um, that ours community in Humboldt that did um, kind of DIY productions of shows and other community stuff, not just music. Probably yeah. There was probably some capacity for film. But even since then, like you're, you doing this film festival, the Druid Film Festival, or the other communities you've been involved with in the art performances, which is like having a space where people can refine their craft, that they can have an audience, that they can, they can develop a message in front of that audience, and and return and the mess the message their craft kind of improves and I and I experienced that with the Gilman Street, and the community around the Berkeley community like that was a really cool thing for me. And I, and I saw how essential that is for developing artists that, especially like a counter stream artists, counter cultural artists, mm -hmm. like it's, uh, people's stuff got better if you had a good audience to it. Um, and I think the, so I identify where I, I, what I know about the placebo, where you come from is like, you know, like it, it was a good model for having good art, art audiences and artists in that interaction mm -hmm. and the blurring the line between audience and artist sometimes. Yeah. Well, the problem is, is that people uh, are often making art that just doesn't get seen, like I was talking about before. Mm. Um, so often I'll see 
I'll see someone's film and I'll say, oh, well, there's something here. This is cool. Um, but obviously this is manufactured to, to be consumed by a film festival. So these are like, this is a submission that someone has made mm. thinking, I'm making a film to submit to a film festival. Even I am making a film to submit and wheel, uh, sometimes that energy can come back around and little pieces of things that you've experienced will stick. Um, and there is power to that. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing that if, if you take in a lot of art, but it is so vital to use your notebook, use um, whatever means that you have to to use ideas, whether even if you're not making art. If to you, record these ideas or interact with these ideas. Interact with the ideas in a real way that 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 creates something else that, that then can be used by you. I mean, that's... Uh, well, we need more things to eventually end up on the island of plastic in the Pacific. It's really important. <laughs> the, the world's newest country. The newest I, continent on the... <laughs> it's, uh, it's very important. Yeah, I should open my uh, VHS video store in that island of plastic. Oh, wow. That's a good title <laughs> for, a v for a video store. Island of plastic? Yeah, why not?